All right, Joshua chapter 24 this morning. Joshua 24, starting at verse number 14. Uh, we'll pick up the context a little bit later, but I just want to start with the... Uh, let's just get right to the money shot here. Verse number 14, the Bible says this, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. Amen. Enjoyed the song this morning from uh, Mrs. Cox. What a wonderful uh, segue into the message this morning. And as we continue with our theme for 2016, Stand Therefore, we turn our attention to one of the three institutions that God has given you and I. Those three institutions are namely government. Let me rephrase that civil government, the family unit, and the local church. Amen. Those three institutions God has given us, and all three are under assault. That's right. The institution of the family is what we are going to outline for you this morning. Now, truly, none of you this morning need for me to outline just how under attack the family unit is. Now, I want to be very, very clear about this because a family is a husband, a wife, and a child or children. That's a family. Now, if you're a husband and a wife and you have no kids, you're a couple. Okay? But if you have a child, you've now become a family. Okay? And then you, by God's grace, we want to expand your family. Amen. But families today have been redefined or in the process of being redefined. Families are criticized for being to 20th century if you're a man and a woman. The head of the home is seen as an air-headed doofus who can't even put one foot in front of the other in order to stand. Right. Needless to say, the family has been, is now and will continue to be attacked and will attempt to be ultimately redefined. Right. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm here because of a couple. Amen. Whether they're married or not, I'm here because of a couple. Amen. And in order to take a stand, we must make the decision to do so. That's right. Now, while it is important that Bible preaching churches take a stand, it is equally important that families take a stand as well. Churches are only as strong as the families and individuals who comprise them. If the devil can put wedges in families, then he can, by default, destroy good churches. And this morning, God is looking for a Joshua. God is looking for a Joshua. A Joshua who is not ashamed or afraid to take a stand and proclaim, as Joshua did in his day, that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. It is my prayer that there are still a few Joshuas left, even in our midst. Our sermon this morning is entitled, As for Me and My House. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity this morning to look to your word. Father, we thank you for all that preceded this sermon, Father, for the great congregational singing, Father, for the reading of your word, Father, for the giving of the, of the believer, Father, and Father, also for the wonderful special we heard as well. And Father, I pray all of that will just knit our hearts together for this sermon today. And Father, if there be somebody in this room this morning that says, Preacher, I don't know that if I died today, I'd go to heaven. Then Lord, I pray that you'd help them to, be, help them to know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And that their sins, no matter what sin they have committed, can be forgiven by Jesus Christ if they will simply come to Him by faith. Father, for the believer in this room who needs encouragement and equipping and edification, 
For the men specifically in this room, Lord, I pray that you will do a work in them that, Father, they would take this fire and bring it back to their households so that, Lord, their families would be what you'd want them to be. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. If, you might, if you will, for a moment, let me give you the background of the passage. If you back up to Joshua 24, verse number 1, notice that the Bible says, And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. Now, all of us know the story, I would hope. If not, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give you a little background here. Moses, the man of God who led the children of Israel out of Egypt and then through the 40-year wilderness wanderings, has gone home to heaven. And Joshua is the man that God has burdened to take over the children of Israel, to cross over the River Jordan, and finally to take the land that God says was full of milk and honey. Now, out, throughout the book of Joshua, Joshua did a great job of leading the children of Israel. Now he is going to be gathered unto his fathers as well. And what we read here is Joshua gathering all the tribes of Israel and begins to give them his last will and testament. And what we are reading is Joshua's final instructions to the children of Israel before shortly a bit later he ends up... Uh, ends up dying. Joshua dies at the ripe old age of 110. Verse number 29 says, And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. Man, he must have... He was, when he was 50, he was just getting zits. Amen? Right. I mean, he was, he was 110 years old. That's a long time. And here we have Joshua gathering the children of Israel together and he gives them his last will and testament. And he starts off in verse number 14 with number one, Joshua's declaration. Joshua's declaration. Starting at verse 14, it says, Now therefore, this is after he goes through a, a, a history of Abraham in verse number three, and then talks about Moses in verse number five, and talks about how they were taken out of the land of Egypt in verse number six and verse number seven, and how they, they were brought into the land of the Amorites in verse number eight, and then he talks about Balak, and he talks about uh, Balaam, and he goes through the history there of Israel, and then he finally gets down to what he wants to say. He comes to the conclusion of the matter. He comes to the climax, and he says, Now therefore, in verse 14, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Amen. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, in other words, if you don't think it's a good thing, he says, then choose you this day. Aren't you glad Joshua wasn't a Calvinist? Yeah. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, that's not talking about Noah's flood, by the way, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. And then Joshua just finally gets it out there and says, listen, but as for me, you can make your choice, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can I say something to you men? God is still looking for a Joshua today to take a stand and make a proclamation. Not necessarily in the church house where it's popular, but in the home house. That's right. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let me give you a couple of things. Number, verse number 14. Notice it says, serve him in sincerity and in truth. We're all about truth here. We love the truth. But God's looking for sincerity before you start blabbing your mouth about truth. Amen, amen. amen. Sincerity is about you. By the way, you know what comes before sincerity? Fearing God. You know why some of you have a problem with the truth? Because you don't have any fear of God and because you're really not sincere. That's your problem this morning. You see, the order is this. Fear God. Serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And then he says, if you'll do those things in that order, you'll put away some things that don't need to be there. Amen, amen, amen. amen. See, Joshua's declaration, uh, his words are straightforward and to the point. None of us in here are going to say that I don't think Joshua was very clear about what he said. 
His words are emblazed in bold colors and not in very light pastels. They are simple, they are straightforward, and they are serious. He says to them, he says, whatever you want to do, you choose to do. But as for me and my house, we're serving God. Amen. We're serving God. Now let's analyze that for a bit. Let's analyze that statement. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's analyze that for a moment. Number one, notice that Joshua's declaration is a personal stand. Joshua's declaration is a personal... Yes, I'm trying to format our theme into every sermon. Yes, because I want it emblazoned on your heart. Amen? Joshua's declaration is a personal stand. Notice again in verse number 15, the very last phrase. He says, but as for me and my house. That is, you can do what you want, and they can do what they want, but as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. Dad, husband, you must make the decision to take a personal stand for you and your household. Amen. There has got to be a bass voice in that house that takes a stand for God. You must make the decision to serve the Lord. You must make the decision to lead your family to serve Him as well. Even if you have kids that don't desire to serve Him. Even if you have a wife that you have to drag to church. Or for that matter, a, a wife that has to drag you to church. That's right. You must make the decision to serve the Lord. Now let me make it plain. Without insulting anybody. Mrs. Joshua did not make this statement. That's right. Mr. Joshua did. Amen. Now, if his wife was present, I'm sure she was standing by him, agreeing with every sentiment that came out of Joshua's mouth. But if you are here this morning, and you are married, whether you have children or not men, you must take the proverbial bull by the horns and make the personal decision to serve the Lord. Yeah. It's you say, well, I'll, I'll let my wife do all that. No, no, you need to do that. Amen. You need to do that. Do you know why some of our men today in the 21st century are a bunch of wussies and pansies? Because we don't have Joshua's in our homes. That's, right. That's why. Joshua was saying, in effect, if you want to continue serving the gods that you all served before the flood, then go ahead. Have it your way. I'm not going to stand in your way, but as for me and the household that I'm a part of, we're serving God. Amen. Now, men, it might not be popular with the world. It definitely isn't. It might not even be popular with your wife. But bless God, you need to stand up, stand tall, speak up that you and your house are serving God come hell or high water. Who cares who's against you? Who cares what the government says? Who cares what the magazines say? Who cares what the movies say? Who cares what the periodicals are written about? You need to take a stand and be a Joshua, not a pansy. Amen. Amen. Joshua's declaration is a personal stand. Let me also give you a note on this one. This personal stand eliminates legalism, but still can influence others. Now let me define legalism for you. Legalism is this. This is the way I do things, and unless you do them like I do them, you're not going to be accepted with God. Now, legalism is in a lot of churches, not just Baptist churches, but it's in a lot of churches. But I've got a lot of Baptist brethren that I love that have legalistic tendencies. They'll say, listen, preacher, unless you preach a sermon like this, unless, you, unless your wife is wearing a skirt that goes below her knee and this and that. I mean, they've got all kinds of legalistic standards. But can I say something to you? This declaration of Joshua taking a personal stand eliminates, eliminates legalism because Joshua is saying, hey, listen, what's... What I'm doing is for me and my home. Amen. You choose what you want to do, men, in your home. That's right. Now, he's not saying you have a license to do whatever you want to do, but he is saying that Joshua is not going to come into your home and say, you need to do it the way we're doing it. Right. Can I say something to you? If you take a stand for God, that will influence others without you even saying anything. I'll give you an example in the opposite. I remember years ago, living in my, uh, with my parents in Norwalk, my parents bought a home there in 1987, and around that time, I started taking a liking to gardening. And I still, to this day, like to garden. 
And, and the neighbors to my right and left had, at that time, really nice yards. Neither one of them ever told my mom and dad to get their yard up to snuff. But just by virtue of living between two people that had nice yards, it compelled us to have a nice yard. I mean, no, none of them say, well, you know, if your St. Augustine was as thick as ours. <laughs> and the way you do this is you've got to get that miracle grow, and you've got to fill it up about this much, and then you've got to do it this two times a week, and then you've got to come out there and you've got to make sure you dig out all those dandelions. None of them said that. But just by virtue of being influenced by their standard, all of a sudden, ours lifted. You know what that's called? That's called influence. That's not called legalism. Legalism would be this. Now, let me tell you what you ought to do to your yard. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do to my yard. I'm going to put this. No, 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 that's not the kind of grass you should put in there. You should put in the other kind of grass that I put in. Dichondria. Which is a pansy grass. You can't stand on that stuff. Every time you stand on it, it burns the section that you stood on. No, you've got to get to St. Augustine because you could literally jump kids on that thing. But nevertheless... I'm simply saying that this personal stand eliminates legalism, but still can influence others. And that's what Joshua was saying. He says, listen, you, if you want to serve the gods that your father served before the flood, go ahead. That's, right. that's not on me. That's your personal stand. But as for me and my house, we're serving God. Amen. Joshua's declaration is a personal stand. Number two, Joshua's declaration is a passionate stand is a passionate stand. Notice, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't think he said it like this. As for me and my house, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna serve God. No, no, no. I believe that as much as those 110-year-old lungs could yell out, to be heard of those several hundreds of thousands of Israelites... I believe Joshua meant what he said and said what he meant. There is no doubt in my mind that Joshua did his best to make sure that everybody heard. He wasn't passive about it. He wasn't lackluster about it. He, was, he wasn't limp-wristed about it. His stand was a passionate one, not a passive one. His stand was a passionate one, not a preferential one. Joshua was saying, my family and I are going to serve God when it's popular, and we are going to serve God when it's not popular. We're going to serve God when we feel like it, and we're going to serve God when we don't feel like it. And may I say to you that the don't feel days are going to outweigh the feel days. Do you know what the church is lacking today? The church is lacking men with the passion of their convictions like Joshua. Some of you are so easily influenced by every wind of doctrine and by the world's sleight of hand that you're leading one day and by tomorrow you throw in the towel because you think it's too hard. You think it's too hard. It makes me look like a dictator or I'm just not a natural leader. I hear all the excuses all the time. It's hard to lead. Yeah, that's why you're a leader. Yeah. Bless God, get off of your blessed assurance, stand up and take a passionate stand, as Joshua did, that you and your family are serving God. Amen. We're serving God. Men, put down your rattle and pick up your Bible and take a passionate stand for the sake of your family and this church because the world deserves strong Joshua-led families. Amen. Joshua's declaration is a passionate stand, not some passive little pansy thing where he just went out there and said in a very dispassionate voice, as for me and my house. I believe he did it. As for me and my house, we're serving God. Thirdly, not only was Joshua's declaration a passionate stand, but thirdly, notice Joshua's declaration is a provoking stand. This is interesting because... I've read this passage several times, but then there's something rather semi-contradictory, at least, at verse 19, that almost sounds like it's different from what he just said in verse 15. But we'll look at that in just a second. But I believe he was doing this to provoke people. Joshua's declaration is... You know, you guys think the preacher only provokes. Joshua was provoking. Now, I want you to look at verse 15 again. He says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And he basically encourages them... 
please follow my lead. Please follow my lead. And then in verse 19, and Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord. Stop. You just encourage them to serve him. Now you're saying they can't. See, Joshua plainly reminds the children of Israel that we all live in the same land. Look, look what it says in verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers that served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites. Stop, look at here. In whose land ye dwell? Joshua was in that same land. He's making the statement, as for me and my house, in the same land that they're listening to him. See, he is reminding the children of Israel that we all live in the same land, we all face the same temptations to serve other gods, whether literal ones or made-up ones. And we all face the same temptations to do things that are contrary to God and His will. That's right. That's right. So don't tell me I have an advantage because I'm a pastor. We all live in the same land. Don't tell me I have an advantage because I've got a family and i got kids. Listen, we all live in the same land, face the same temptations, with the same problems. We all live in the same land. That's right. Don't say I've got one up on you because of this, that, or the other thing. Listen, if it were up to me, I don't even know what I'd be doing right now. But yet Joshua is able to take a stand and maintain it while the others say they want to, then drift back on their word to God. That's right. See, Joshua was able to do what some of these children of Israel could not do. Let me, you need to just write this down. Some of you blow more hot air than you really mean down deep. See, after Joshua encourages the children of Israel to choose between the gods of their fathers and the God of heaven and earth, Joshua then gives them a reality check in verse 19 by saying, you don't really mean it. Now, let, let's follow it on. He just says in verse 15, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Verse 16, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Look up here. You don't need to get the context. Just know what I'm talking about and know from the book of Joshua. They had gods in their possessions when they said that. <laughs> For the Lord our God, He it is that brought us up out of, the, of our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage in which did those great signs in our sight, preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we serve the Lord for He is our God. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, that sounds great. That sounds, man, they're on my side of this thing. And Joshua is given an insight by the Holy Spirit of God into their hearts and says, you know what? You cannot serve Him. And then he tells them why. For he is a holy God and he's a jealous God. Right. Now why did he say that? Because you got some things in your personal affects right now that are causing him to get jealous. That's right. And you're not separating and consecrating yourself like the holy God deserves. Amen. He says, you cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. And then catch this. I'm glad it's not the Old Testament. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. That's right, that's right. Boy, that's a tough one. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then He will turn and do you hurt. Boy, that doesn't sound like a popular Joel Osteen message. And consume you after that He hath done you good. Wow. Wow. I bet that's not being preached somewhere in Santa Clarita this morning. <laughs> Verse 21, And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Not one time do they say we're putting away our gods. But boy, they're, we're, hey, we're going to serve and we're going to serve them. But I'm going to keep a few. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to keep a few though. He don't see these. Now therefore, and there Joshua says it again, put away, Joshua must be really privy to information. <laughs> 
Put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and His voice will we obey. They still haven't done anything. And so Joshua made a covenant with the people. Oh, now it's going to get good. Now, this is when it really gets good, and then Darwin gets in on the mix. Look at verse 25. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Behold, this stone... What a, what a, what a statement... This stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. You know what he just said? He said, this rock heard everything you said. That's right. Now that wouldn't be a problem if you believe what Jesus said over there uh, in, uh, in, the book of, uh, in the book of Matthew, where he says, uh, if you try to shut me up, the rocks will cry out. That's right. And that's something. Hey, be careful what you say around rocks and bushes. Because they may tell on you. <laughs> so Joshua, verse 28, let the people depart, every man into his inheritance. And then, of course, in verse 28, he ends up passing. Verse 29, excuse me. You know what Joshua was saying? He was saying, all this talk of we will serve the Lord is just a bunch of bluster if you're not willing to get rid of your idols and false gods from among you. Stop paying God rhetorical service when He wants action to follow the words. You say, is that what He was saying? Of course He was. That's why He says in verse 19, here's why you can't serve Him. Because He's holy and He's jealous. Right. Jealous of what? Jealous of anything or anyone you place above him. That's right. Anyone or anything you place above him. That includes Brad Pitt, <laughs> Justin Bieber, uh, One Direction, uh, or any other Laker star, or baseball, or football, or politician, or singer. That's right. I don't care who it is. If you put that person or your dog... Amen. God doesn't want you, uh, a relationship between you and him to be affected by a German shepherd <laughs> or a chow or bless God, a shih tzu like we have at home. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Can you imagine how that one would turn out at the judgment seat of Christ? But anyway, let me ask you a question. Men, are you full of bluster this morning? <laughs> are, are your words, as for me in my house, just a bunch of hot air, a bunch of meaningless chatter? Uh, all talk with no substance, much like Democrats. How many of you say, I'll serve you, but then cling tight to a few of your favorite gods, unwilling to yield them to God's will? Now, if every one of us was honest, we'd say, yeah, we've done that. I'm not just talking about you men. I mean everybody. How many of you say, I'll serve you, but then you'll cling tight to a few of your favorites? Say, listen, I, I'm with you, God, but this thing right here has got me. <laughs> you say, were they good to their oath? Were they good to the rock? <laughs> Look at Judges chapter 2, verse 11. This is after Joshua passed away. Verse number 1 of Judges 1 after the death of Joshua, it came to pass, so on and so forth. Verse number 11, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, followed other gods and the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asheroth. Boy, it doesn't, doesn't take too long for the apple to fall too far from the tree. Joshua's declaration is a provoking stand. You know what all that tells me? You couldn't serve God without the Holy Spirit of God giving you a new nature. Amen. You couldn't serve God in your own power, under your own flesh, in this world, without having a new nature that God gives you inside of you. Amen. That's right. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. 
That's one of the big differences between religion and Bible Christianity. Religion says, let's sweep it all up and then maybe God will accept it all. Christianity says, I'll sweep it up and then we'll take care of the walk afterwards. Amen. See, you know what the world needs? A few more Joshuas. Amen. Do you know what this church needs? A few more Joshuas. Amen. Do you know what your family needs? Your family needs a Joshua. Amen. Dad, husband, you need to take a personal stand, a passionate stand, and a provoking stand that as for me and my house, we're serving God. Who cares what the neighbors are doing? They can do what they're going to have to do. They're going to answer to God on their own. That's right. Don't conform them to the image of your household. They are going to answer God on their own. You make a personal stand for you and your household. You need to mean what you say and say what you mean like the man Joshua. Then as for me and my house, we are serving God. Amen. We need Joshua's. Not men that are given to the culture. Men, be a Joshua. Ladies, Love your Joshua.